Welcome to this week's episode of The How To's. Now for our host, Dr. Dimitri Bragg. Hey everybody, glad you're hanging out with us again here at the How To's with Dr. Bradley. My name is Terrence Jones. I'm with Dr. Dimitri Bradley, man yes, of God, man yes, of the sir. hour. Yes, sir. And you are at part two of how the church should get involved in social issues. This is a, a great topic that we chop up around here. And so we're going to let you in on it. Uh, make sure that you do subscribe to the channel. And make sure you like the video. Hit us up in the comment section. Tell us what you think about it and share some of your ideas, man. We'd love to hear from you about this topic and other things we got going on yes, here. Sir. City TV and City Church. How you doing today, Pastor? Doing good, sir. How are you? Good, 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 man. good, good, good. Let's jump right into it. And this, this is the question that, uh, well, before we get to that, let me talk about this. Because when we left off, we were talking about the impact that the church can have on a community yes. when the community gives back. But I believe there's a certain impact that it also has on the church. And, Absolutely. And, and this, this is what I mean. It, going here, and knowing that we are involved in because I live in I live in Eastern and Virgo too. Right. So and knowing that we're involved in things, it it puts a special place in my heart for the commission right. and what the commission really means in terms of acting out the gospel. Right. Um, what do you think the impact is that it has for church members to know that your church is active in helping out the community? Um, I'm gonna use some language that may not be churches I, I think it creates a certain sense of pride you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying that knowing mm -hmm. when you tell people where you go and people know that you guys are involved i think it makes you feel good about where you go to church yeah. listen man we're in we're in an age where where people you know church is getting shot down all the time yeah. you know pastors yeah. doing crazy stuff churches doing crazy stuff and so it, it probably is pretty settling mm -hmm. to be able to say hey i go here and people go oh, okay well you know, they were here, they did, they did this, or right. they did that. Yeah, right. I think it is settling. I think it does help. And it, does, yeah. it helps with the morale of people. And I think it helps with not just our church. I just think it helps with the reputation of the church. Yes. Uh, because I think churches have just taken such a hit. So I try to be mindful of, of that, mm -hmm. of not just city church. It's just church in general. Mm -hmm. I am trying to change the paradigm of how they see us. Yeah. Uh, I remember some time ago, just in, in along that line, when we first got in this neighborhood, one of our outreaches was we went around to, to the neighborhood right in front of us mm -hmm. with donuts. We mm -hmm. went and bought uh, boxes of donuts. I mean, mm -hmm. boxes and boxes and boxes of donuts. And we went to every house, houses and knocked on the door and said, hey, listen, we want to be a blessing to you. Wow. Uh, give you a box of donuts. Wow. You know what people say? Yeah. What's the catch? <laughs> See, there why y'all here? <laughs> y'all trying to give me something. <laughs> right. you know, what, you, what you going to try to preach to me? Yeah. And we didn't do that. Yeah. But the whole point was we needed to, we know that the church has had a bad reputation in mm. neighborhoods and communities. Right. And so our job, not just for our church, but just to help kind of change the way people see church in mm. general. Mm -hmm. Always, they trying to get something from it. Well, we didn't, we were trying to bring something. To you. Right. Uh, we love for you to come to church, but if you don't, you can still have these donuts. Yeah, yeah that's so important. <laughs> that is, that, that's what ministry is. Yeah. That's what ministry, ministry is far less taking anything. It, it's really mostly giving. It's mostly giving. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. So this conversation might be foreign to some church goers because it appears right. a certain demographic of churches are more active than others and i'm speaking about oh, yeah. the white church versus the black <laughs> white church. church it Absolutely. seems like the white church is is, is always given and, and and the black church is not is that a, a bad rap is a bad perception or yeah, is there some truth all, to that? all all of the above check, check <laughs> box. I, I mean I, I think people are not evaluating stuff well let, let's 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 take that from the top let's okay. slice one piece of this pile first okay. number one i think uh, e economics drives some of this yes. i mean i think a lot of these churches and i'm not knocking them and please don't take me wrong or write me emails or send me letters or whatever <laughs> but you know when you have a different economic situation then you can do some things differently mm -hmm. you know what i mean um when 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 the people that go to your church are in a certain economic level and then you tell me well we're going we, we went to africa we did this we did that we did that well i got africa in my backyard so yeah. i don't know why you got to fly to africa when we got <laughs> africa right here right, right uh so to speak and so my point would be there are people here who have needs but when your church is in a different um economic situation you can do more mm -hmm. um, the people that go to our church are not all affluent mm -hmm. and so that affects the economics of the church yep. which in turn affects what you can do right. I mean, we can't we can't we can't do some a lot of outreach costs money yeah and we use the monies that we get here to facilitate that so yeah. that's why you see a lot of disparity in what and what can happen sometimes mm -hmm. it's just because it's economically driven yeah. you know mm -hmm. 
and, and that is what it is. Yeah. Let me plug something right quick. If, if you are concerned about what your church is doing in your community, the question I'll ask you is, are you giving to that church in the community? Do you, do you think these food boxes come out of nowhere? You yeah. know, do you think these coaches <laughs> drop out of the sky? They, no. they don't. The, it, it, it's a cyclical thing. The, the church needs the community and the community needs the church. And just like Pastor said, you, if, if you're giving, then your, your, your organization will be able to give. But if you're not giving, if you're just looking at the church and throwing stones at it, y'all don't do nothing. I would ask you, you know, what, what are you, you doing? doing? <laughs> you know, what yeah. are you really doing? I, I would jump on that and say a good <laughs> example would be this. And we've done this outreach for years. Um, so, you know, everybody has, not everybody, but a lot of churches have back to school mm. drives and all right. that kind of stuff. And right. they do backpacks and books and whatever. So when we saw that, we got involved on a different level. Yeah. Uh, we went to Nike mm. and we saw the shoes that people were giving away and we wanted to make sure we gave the kids shoes that we thought they would wear. We know, I know the environment we're in, mm -hmm. I know the community that we're in, and I know kids gotta go to school a certain way. Right. You know what I mean? Well, at and least deal with stuff when they get to school. deal with stuff when they get to school. Yeah, so yeah. we took all that in consideration. So instead of letting them give us shoes mm -hmm. that they that we knew they were not gonna wear, we bought them. Mm -hmm. All right, that that whole thing was quite expensive. Mm -hmm. um, five or six, seven hundred pairs of sneakers. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And we bought those. They didn't give those to us. Mm -hmm. We bought those. And uh, so that requires finances. Yeah. If you don't have it, then it's hard to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's just real deal. We, we've had um, food trucks, mm -hmm. uh, not food trucks, but feed the children, tractor trailers. Yeah. I mean, those things are expensive they yeah. don't come for free you know right they, they, they you you pay for those yeah and that's how we're able to do it but economics a lot, a lot of times drives that train yeah yeah absolutely absolutely with some of the things that happen particularly in the black community with um well urban black community crime and things like that does it seem that the church the black church shies away from really making an impact with you know uh gang violence and crime and drug trafficking and all those types of things or are, are they putting, and I hate to say it like this, but are they putting a Jesus Band-Aid on it? Um, I think you got, that's kind of an open-ended question. I think in some cases, yes. In some mm -hmm. cases, no. I think it just depends on the church and where they are and, and how active their community is in mm -hmm. certain things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'll share this. And this is, again, I can only use our church, so yeah. I'm not using this as a platform to pump city church. Right. But this is what I would say. And I had this told to me by one of our members. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our members said that they went to the local bowling alley around here, and the rumor was that you know we've outgrown our church and we were going to move. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the person who owned the bowling alley, which I'm going to assume uh, is not African American, mm -hmm. said that man, we are not happy that the church is moving because we can tell that the people who are coming to the bowling alley are different wow. than when we were here. Wow. So I say all that to say that I think that again, drug culture, drug trafficking, I believe if, if in all of those things that affect the community, mm -hmm. if we can win people in mm -hmm. our community and lives are changed, mm -hmm. then it changes what's happening out there. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would agree that you got to put a Jesus Band-Aid on it, but I think it starts with winning people. Mm -hmm. And when you win people, then you can talk to them about a different lifestyle. Yeah. And then I think that's how you get the guys off the corner. Yeah. And that's how you get some of these things out there. And obviously prayer and that those, those things are great. Right. But I think if you start winning people, yeah. people start changing, then it's less of that in yeah. your neighborhood and it's less of that in your community. Right. And the community starts turning corners yeah, and people good. start getting better. That's good. It reminds me of a situation some years ago. I was ministering at um, in the peak mm -hmm. and uh, Chris came and ran in there. It was like, man, come outside. And it was uh, three guys out there and they were like, you know, we were about to put in some work mm -hmm. and some told us we need to come here first. And, you know, so I talked with those brothers. Um, I knew what neighborhood they were from and, um, you know, just able to, to build with them. And long story short, they didn't put in that work. Right. And, you know, it just made me think, you know, what, what if we weren't there? What if there was no, what, what if there were no men of God there right. that would be able to relate to these guys right. and be like, you know, that that's really not what you want to do or, or what you need. what if the, the church that they were came to had such a reputation yeah. uh, that they didn't want to even right. be bothered with right. us? You right. know what I mean? So I, I look yeah. at all those. Because they came here, you, you got to know when they pulled up, they were like, well, they, they cool in there. Right. Because they could have went to a church and be like, oh, I heard about them. They kind of stuck up. They, but they cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, so it is important. It's definitely important. So you're a, a senior pastor in this community. Uh, what do you think the senior pastor's voice should be 
in the community? Should it be, you know, the, 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 the loud one or should it be, uh, I guess, minimized in favor of, you know, whoever the political figure is in the community? Like, how do you think that should? Go? I think you ought to stick to the truth. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think you ought to stick to truth and what's right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think your voice uh, doesn't necessarily have to be loud, but it needs to be accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think people don't look for loud, they look for accurate, mm -hmm. you know, and I think you have to be accurate. So you have to properly assess what's going on in your uh, community. Mm -hmm. What's happening, what's taking place, who's being affected, and how does this affect the people that are in the congregation here? Mm -hmm. And then you have to be accurate about what you say. Mm -hmm. So that means I need to do some homework, do some research. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure I got what the word says. I need to make sure I have my facts right. And then I need to attack it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm big on not letting the stuff attack you. You go after mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and give them some real solutions on how we're going to deal with this, mm -hmm. whether it's an economic problem, whether it's a police problem, whether it's a drug problem, whether it's a bad decision problem, whatever mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. attack it and be accurate. Because here's what I found out. When people get results with what they hear, mm -hmm. they'll listen to what yeah. you got to say. Yeah, and you know, all the stuff that we're talking about, it doesn't seem really far mm -hmm. from what Jesus was doing when Absolutely. he was walking the earth. It, you know, he, he was... He was vocal about the issues that he was seeing. That's right. But he was addressing it from a kingdom standpoint and not a worldly standpoint. So the example that you use, the worldly standpoint would have been stone the woman. Right. The kingdom standpoint was, can we? Can I stone everybody then? That's right. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's forgive. Yeah. You know, that's the kingdom standpoint. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's that's right. And and that's what you want. I mean, I think Jesus dealt with all kinds of uh, what I think uh, situations. Listen, he dealt with. Peter being on a boat right. and not making any money catching yeah. fish. Yeah. He preached on his boat and said, hey, man, let, let your net down for a catch. Why? Right. It, it ain't right for me to use your boat right. and you not to get your needs met. Yeah. Uh, he, he was in, you know, so he was in Peter's house and Peter's mother was sick. He dealt with that. Yep. So he obviously is dealing with the issues of the day. Yeah. Uh, Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, who was probably a little shady. Yeah. You know what I mean? He went and dealt with that guy. So so I think that's what you got to hear. Hear what's going on and then deal with it and be accurate about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right, we're gonna shut this down. We're we'll gonna come back for part three, man. We always do. We plan for part two and three, but well, two, but we go to part three. So we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk more about this again. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video and share it with somebody else. And we're gonna see you next week here at the How To with Dr. Brad. See you soon. Thanks for watching the How To. Please like and share the video and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also visit us at DimitriBradley.com for more things about Pastor Bradley. And please, don't forget to subscribe to City TV.